Hi, this is Mrs. Pope from Roger Bacon High School, and today we're going to be uh, talking about Section 3.2 in your textbooks, Solving Linear Equations by Graphing. I know that my d paper does not look exactly like yours. You have the example one written up about the Roger Bacon's ninth grade class, um, so I don't have that one on here, but we will refer back to that. But I wanted you to keep that in mind and take a look at that. Um, right now, if you can read it, the Roger Bacon's ninth grade class has $25 in their class account. This money is to be used for buying the supplies for the class bake sale. So the equation, M for money or moolah, uh, is equal to 25 minus 0.15 or 15 hundredths, C, uh, represents the money left in the class account after making C cookies. When will all of the money be out of the account? So this is a type of question that we can solve many different ways. We're going to solve algebraically, graphically, but today we're going to be focusing on graphing. So I want you to keep this in the back of your mind. We're not going to do this problem right now. This is something for you to think about what you learned today and how you could apply it to this example. So actually today what we are going to learn um, and I would write this right after that, before the vocabulary. So today, you will make a table and graph lines of slope intercept in standard form. So today you will make, make sure you're writing this above where I have vocabulary on yours. Today you will make a table and graph lines in slope intercept in standard forms. Now, now ours should look similar. Yours should say vocabulary. Before we begin our lesson, I want to make sure you have four vocabulary terms um, that you can that we'll be referring to to make sure you know these. And you've heard them before, I'm assuming. So one we have is root. And this is any value that makes an equation true. You also hear zeros, not just the number, but finding the zeros. And these are the values of x that make the equation equal to zero. equal to zero. Um, we're also going to talk about x-intercepts. And this is where the graph crosses the x-axis. And this is the graph, when I mean the graph of the line or whatever you're graphing, crosses the x-axis. And last but not least, solutions. Remember, you can pause if we're going too fast. This is the value of x that also makes the equation true, same as a root. All right, so I want you to make a note that these terms are used interchangeably. I don't even know if I spelled that right. <laughs> Interchange, I think I need an A there. Interchangeably. Um, and they're asking for the same thing. So sometimes we'll say, find the roots, or find the zeros, or find the x-intercepts, or find the solutions. We're kind of talking about the same thing. All right, let's just move along, where you have example two, uh, solve by graphing. So what we're going to graph here, and let me make sure it's, I don't need to go that far. Um, example two, solve by graphing. First, we are going to start in slope-intercept form. So yours says example two, solve by graphing, 
and I want you to put y equals mx plus b. So we're going to start with this form. We have two of these, two standard forms, and then we're out of here. So the first one I'm going to give you is y equals 2x minus 1. I want you to make a table and graph the values for this. So we have x on the left. We're going to put our equation here in the middle. And yes, before you ask, do you have to write this? Yes, you do. If I write it, you write it. And we're going to have our output over here. So this is what our table is going to look like. If this is not enough space for you, feel free to write other write in your notebooks or anywhere else you need to. Um, so I want to plug in, and I can plug in as many as I want because they're all in the line. I'm just going to plug in four right now. So I'm plugging in these values. I chose whatever x values I want, and I'm going to plug them in. So y is equal to 2 times negative 1 minus 1. And you can do this in your head, or you can do it with your calculator, whatever it is, just to figure out when you multiply 2 times negative 1, you get negative 2 minus 1 again, negative 3. So I won't explain the rest. You can figure out however way is best for you to figure those out. So y is equal to 2 times 0 minus 1. You should get negative 1. y equals 2 times 1 minus 1. 2 times 1, 2. Minus 1 is 1. And then finally for this one, y equals 2 times 2 minus 1, which is going to be equal to 3. So now that you've made a table, we want to graph this. So this is why I gave you graph paper, so you can kind of have the grid on there for you. So let's plot our points. Negative 1, negative 3. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3. And yes, I do want you to label them negative 1, negative 3. The next one will be 0 and negative 1, because when I put in 0 for x, I get negative 1 for y. Pretend my line is straight. And then 1, 1. And 2, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So I can now graph my straight line. <laughs> straight is... Uh, yeah, that's not that straight. Pretend that's straight. There's my straight line, and it's going through all of my points. Um, what I do want to notice here, there are two parts I want you to notice. One here, and one here. These are our x-intercept and our y-intercept. If this is our x-axis, then here we have our x-intercept. And where it crosses our y-axis, which is here at 0, negative 1, this is our y-intercept. Just want you to note that. All right, it's time to flip to the back. If you need to watch that over again, feel free. We are moving to the back page. All right, now we have example three. And this one is also y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. And I'll give you the equation. If you'd like to go ahead and pause it and try it on your own, that would be great. And then play it again and see if you got it. So y equals 4x minus 2. Yes, you must make the table. Again, if I'm writing it, you should be writing it. y equals 4x minus 2. And here's our y. So we'll only do three on these, negative 1, 0, and 1. And go ahead and plug them in. So 4 times 1, 4 minus 2 is, uh, let me make sure I have my right equation, 4x minus 2. Oh, I see what's wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. Anybody get, what just happened there? Well, that's fancy. Not what I was trying to do. Um, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 minus 2 is going to be negative 6. And then if I plug in 0, 4 times 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, negative 2. 4 times 1, minus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. Plot those points on a graph. Hopefully your lines are straighter than mine. And make sure you label them. So if I have negative 1, oh, I'm going to need to go a little lower. And that's right. That's why we use pencil in class. 
exactly. All right, so negative 1 down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ooh, I picked just the right amount. And then I need 0, negative 2. 0, negative 2. And I need 1, 2. 1, 2. Here's my attempt at a straight line. Uh, there are straighter things in the world than that, but so is life. 1, 2, 0, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 6. We've graphed our line. Beautiful. All right, uh, we have two more examples. I need to move a little quickly. I definitely want this under 15 minutes. So let's move on to example 4. And this is going to be in AX plus BY equals C. And we're only going to graph one of the two of these. So our first example is going to be negative 3X plus Y is equal to negative 2. Now we're in standard form. So it's a little bit different. But we're going to make a table just the same. So I'm going to have negative 3X plus Y is equal to negative 2. And then I'm going to have my Y column. I'm going to just do 2. I'm going to do negative 1. Remember, you can pick whichever ones you want for your domain, your x. And I'm going to go ahead and plug all those in. So negative 3 times negative 1 plus y is equal to negative 2. I'm going to do one of these on the side, and the rest you can show the work however you wish. So negative 3 times negative 1 plus y is equal to negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 1, 3 plus y is equal to negative 2. Subtract 3 from both sides. And we would get negative 5. All right, so my y value is negative 5. Like I said, take your time and pause if you need to work these out on your own. I'm just going to go ahead and finish them for us. So 0 is going to be negative 2. And if I plug in 2, I should end up with 4. And you can go ahead and plot that graph if you'd like. I know, I feel at this point you should be able to plot the ordered pairs. Last example for today, we have example 5. This is also an ax plus by equals c. And we are going to use 4x plus 2y is equal to negative 8. And let's go ahead and make our table. And I'm going to pick just 2 again. I'm going to do negative 2, 0, and 2 this time. So 4 times negative 2 plus 2y is equal to negative 8. And if we do that, we should get 0. 4 times 0 plus 2y is equal to negative 8. We should end up with negative 4. And 4 times 2 plus 2y is equal to negative 8. We should end up with negative 8. So I do actually want to plot this one just to show you one last thing. And let's go by twos here. So um, this is my zero, zero. Two, four, six, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. Two, four, six. No, oh, I need to go this way. All right, so if I plotted negative two, zero, I'm going to have a point here. If I plotted zero, negative four, I've got one here. And I also have two, negative eight. That's just my origin right there. So notice this line. Whoa. Pretend it went through those points. Notice on here we have our x-intercept and our y-intercept. My line really should be better than that. Come on, Miss Pope. Can't you draw a straight line? Not really, but if you just keep coloring, it looks like it goes through all the points. All right. Um, I wanted to make note that we have our y-intercept on the graph and our x-intercept. And let's look at the graph at what those are. So our y-intercept is here. I'm sorry, that's our x-intercept. Our x-intercept is here. Here's our y-intercept. 
So at negative 2, 0, it's crossing the x-axis. I know it sounds funny, but if it's our x-intercept, that is when y is 0. Because think about it, you're not up or down anywhere on the axis. You're right here, so you're not moving anywhere. So your y is 0. Whereas if our y-intercept here, notice our x is 0. Because I haven't gone left or right, I'm just straight on the axis. So keep that in mind. Your y-intercept, your x is 0. And for your x-intercept, your y is 0. Okay, that's it. So for tomorrow, I would like you to see, make a table uh, for the equation at the beginning of the example one with the Roger Bacon um, ninth grade class. Try to make a table for that. Don't worry about graphing it, but see if you can figure out when m is equal to zero just from looking at the values of your table. So we'll be looking for you to have that table completed and all of your notes as well. Remember, Report to the library tomorrow. I forgot to let Mrs. Pope's class know about this. So everybody needs to report. All three classes, anybody watching this on Wednesday, need to report to the library. Thanks. Have a good night.